You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Everyone and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode we have Greg Jones, the CTO of Kajit. Kajit provides optimized IoT connectivity software and hardware solutions for different industries. Um, and on today's episode, we talk a lot about the current landscape of IoT, kind of from their perspective, and also how IoT is playing a role in different areas, maybe through non-tech companies, for instance, kind of what we dive into. Um, we also talk about the key drivers and enablers to the exponential growth of IoT devices and use cases and how are IoT devices connectivity really helping close that digital divide uh, for people that are disadvantaged or otherwise unable to get equal good services and things like that. And we then wrap up by talking about the general challenges we're seeing in the space and kind of how you can overcome them. But before we get into this episode, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start, check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Greg, to the IoT for All show. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, it's great to have you. Very excited about this conversation. And I think a great way to kick this off would be to have you give an introduction about yourself, background experience, anything relevant that our audience could get a little more context on who they're listening to. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I've been in the um, mobile telecommunications world for about 15 plus years now. I started off with AT&T, then uh, moved on to Nextel for a while until Nextel later got bought by Sprint. Um, And then, you know, I moved into other areas, uh, different industries, uh, healthcare, uh, worked for a healthcare informatics company, um, for about four or five years. And then in education, worked for one of the world's largest education companies as well. So coming to Khajiit, it's been, uh, it's been great because I'm, I'm able to kind of take all those different industry experiences in some of the, the uh, IoT uh, industries and use cases that we have, and then apply it, of course, to all my mobile telephony background. Right. Um, as far as Khajiit's concerned, I've been um, with Khajiit a little over two years now. And the company really had its roots in education. Uh, the The initial uh, vision for uh, Khajiit was to provide, you know, connections for good, and that meant, you know, connecting children uh, to um, all kinds of platforms, um, in in and especially in the education space, to be able to get kind of safe content um, at a low cost, and to be able to really help bridge that digital divide for the children that didn't have access. Um, to the same levels of internet activity um, and broadband that uh, that others did in in more uh, advantaged uh, situations, and then it kind of grew from there. It really became more of an IoT company, and uh, since then we've expanded into healthcare, in mm-hmm. transportation, in um, field services, and right. several others. So. So what is the kind of overall focus of Khajiit and how would you kind of explain it to to our audience to get a sense of the role you all play in the space? Yeah, so um, Khajiit overall, we fall into the sector, I guess, um, that you would call IT managed or excuse me, um, IoT managed connectivity solutions. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, what that basically breaks down to is we take everything from, you know, acquiring the devices Um, figuring out what devices a business may need for their IoT solutions, um, provisioning those devices, uh, running them all the way through uh, what applications are going to be installed on them, et cetera, Mm -hmm. Um, connecting them to various networks, which could be private or public networks. Um, We have relationships with over a dozen uh, carriers in the U.S. and Canada and and abroad. Um, We've got uh, then from there, it's about really taking those connections and turning them into intelligent connections, right? Through analytics, right. alerts, right. Um, actions that can be taken on the device. Of course, providing it all through uh, multiple security layers and then you know, doing all the support and service uh, for our customers as well. And is there, from a focus standpoint, like I guess one way that's usually good for audience to kind of understand all the details here uh, and bring it more, more full circle is to talk a little bit about uh, use cases and any applications that you're all focused on. I know you mentioned um, education, healthcare, and so forth. But if you could maybe break that down from a to more of a use case side, uh, you know, remote learning, uh, patient monitoring, things like that across the board. Where where are you all focused on? 
Yeah, great. Um, so let me add one more comment that'll probably give sure. context for the listeners um, to help understand a little bit more about how Khajiit is set up. Yep. And that will lead right into how those use cases in the various industries play out. Perfect. So at the, at the very top level <clears throat> is what we call our platform, right? So Sentinel is the name of our platform. Okay. And the Sentinel platform is really built um, as a full end to end. I talked about, you know, everything from customer support on the front end, setting up their their clients and their customer hierarchies and all the types of uh, things that you need to kind of get up and running, um, okay. device groups, et cetera. So that platform kind of starts there with our customer portal and being able to do all of those things, either white glove service through us or through our reseller um, part of the platform where others can sell uh, white label on on their be on uh, our behalf, their behalf, we're doing, um, uh, you know, support for them to, to sell to their end, uh, users. Right. Then there's a security layer that falls in there, a um, advanced analytics layer, um, a control layer, which really does everything from policy management to controlling the devices and um, doing things that uh, that really optimize the uh, the use of those devices. And then really that network layer, right? So those are kind of all the components right. that fall into what we call the Sentinel platform. Gotcha. Within the Sentinel platform, there's a product portfolio. And the product portfolio <clears throat> excuse me, really falls into uh, a few different layers um, that, that I mentioned before. Um, some of the products that we, uh, that we support um, are in, in the same categories, basically, but things like direct access, Sentinel Insights, um, uh, Sentinel Control, there's a whole bunch of different products in there. And what those are is ways for us to configure our, configure our solutions, right? So what uh, what you'll find is that each of the products, there's about 12 or 13 products I won't go into here um, in our product portfolio. And in each of those may have 10 or 12 or 15 features each. So think of it as being hundreds of features across a dozen mm -hmm. products that sit on top of this kind of all-inclusive platform, right? Gotcha. So what happens from a solutions perspective, and that's really what we are as an IoT managed solutions um, platform, Okay. is from a solutions perspective, then imagine a board with all those products and all those features. And uh, when we go to a specific use case, let's say in education, uh, smart mm -hmm. bus is one of our uh, one of our solutions. If you want to hook up a smart bus and you're a school district, uh, then the key features of a smart bus may be you know, video monitoring to ensure safety of the children getting on and off sure. the bus. Sure. Um, it may require, you know, the equipment may be, you know, a, a 5G router, for instance, that can handle, you know, wide, uh, a wide spectrum of, of uh, access to um, also for all the riders to be able to do homework run on the bus, et cetera, handle sure. the video, sure. um, things like that. And then also geolocation services. So, okay. so components of some of our products, obviously being able to track where the bus is, is the bus late, is, you know, what right, speed right, is it right. driving, is it driving safely, et cetera. So all of those features within the product portfolio that make sense to configure and package into that smart bus solution mm -hmm. um, is kind of how we would go to market for that. Gotcha. <clears throat> Similarly, um, I'll throw out another example of a solution. Uh, EV, charging, EV charging has become a, a big okay. Uh, a, a big growth area for us, right? So right, right, right. many, many more electric vehicles out there. Um, in order to power those, many companies are popping up all over the place with these electric vehicle charging stations. Well, in order to monitor those, get the device telemetry off of them, figure out what's happening, are they charging at 100%, are they operating yep. properly, et cetera, you know, they need to have IoT uh, connectivity. And so in that case, you know, obviously a little bit different set of equipment, um, but then different features are important there. One of the features okay. that we have um, in this solution is something we call direct access. So to be able to have a VPN tunnel essentially from their server out to their device to be able to send instructions, make updates, et cetera, is important there. And in that use case, um, obviously being able to do a lot of analytics uh, and alerts and controls on that device is important. So the solution is configured a little bit differently um, and it's taken to market, um, you know, and packaged a little bit different. Right, right. Um, and then it just goes on, right, for remote patient sure. monitor, et cetera. Each of those yep, just kind yep, of take yep. advantage of different components of our product port portfolio. Totally makes sense. I appreciate the breakdown. That makes complete sure. sense. Um, so if we move out a little bit, um, kind of more high level here from, from a discussion standpoint, how do you um, and, and the company as a whole kind of view the current landscape of 
IoT. And and what I'm kind of wanted to hear your because of your background and the company's background, IoT has expanded from just being a focus for you know more tech companies or companies with more of an established tech presence to really covering a lot of different industries now. Um, there's a many reasons why that's happening, but I wanted to kind of get from your perspective why um, you all kind of feel like this is 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 happening now as opposed to you know five ten years ago, and you know kind of where where it potentially is going. Yeah, so um, that's a great question. It's a big question. Um, sure. So IoT in general, like you said, used to be kind of the real high tech companies were, you know, the Amazons and the, the others were out there kind of pushing, you know, Google's whatnot, were pushing, you know, certain devices and smart homes and, and you know, Alexa devices and intelligence for people to use kind of right. more um, uh as you know, an improvement on how life works, right? But now it's become an imperative, right? It it has undeniably become the way that companies have to look at um, operating, right? From uh, if you're manufacturing, right? Everything has to be connected devices, how you manufacture the process, how you monitor it, you know, the passing of information back and forth between devices, machine to machine, et cetera. Um, the advent of uh, what I think will eventually roll out, even though it's been a little delayed, is the self-driving cars, right? Yep, um, yep. You have tons of information that you need to be able to have <clears throat> operating within that kind of scenario. And 5G is going to make that um, much more important in edge computing so that you can take information and process it within a device with high right, bandwidth right. and, and you know, right. be able to uh, have it be a really super smart device with high compute capacity instead of having to, having to pass that information back to a data center or in the cloud. Right process back out to the device so that's another one i think um the other pieces that are inevitable is revenue streams businesses now are becoming dependent on um iot solutions to power their revenue streams i just mentioned one which is uh electric vehicle charging stations right right, right. um now you have governments all over the place whether it's smart cameras whether it's uh lighting systems and you know all kinds of things that previously uh you know would be set on you know, a, a timer maybe, or on a, sure. uh, you know, it's always on. Now you can control all those things uh, remotely and optimize when they're on, when they're off, what the situations are, detect if there's a problem with, et cetera. So it doesn't matter if you're government, if you're trying to build new revenue streams, if you're, um, you know, out there on the cutting edge, mm -hmm. you know, IoT has just become pervasive and the prolifer proliferation of devices um, and the investments there. And like I said, 5G and other things that are now making the bandwidth, yep. um, you know, extraordinary um, are just creating tons of use cases. Yeah, I think, you know, to even to expand on what you're saying, um, 5G is, is coming in a way that's going to provide opportunities for new use cases to be developed. But at the same time, where 5G is maybe overkill, there's such a diverse number of different connectivity options in the market now where you can find things that better fit your solution to help bring the cost back around. <laughs> to right. or bring the cost in in more in line with um you know the roi that you're searching for as opposed to overpaying potentially for for bandwidth you don't need or, or features in that connectivity that you don't need for your use case to be successful so i think the the diversity in connectivity is a huge piece um and then just the general reduction in cost across all different pieces of an iot solution um combined with the um, reducing in, of complexity in, uh, in how a lot of those work or how quickly you can get a lot of those to market, I think are really big contributors as well. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I think two points that I'd make on what you just said, first of all, the cost is going down, right? The device yeah. cost is going down. The connectivity cost is going down, um, right. uh, you know, as a per unit cost. Um, I'll give an example, say asset tracking, right? If you're trying right. to track things that are going into a port, uh, or the temperature of a vehicle, you know, yep. those kind of things before may have been a little too too hard to do, um, and or the cost of setting it up and running it and monitoring and all that was a little too much for companies to want to bite off because they're like, hey, we're a transportation company, we're not an IT company, mm -hmm. um, so uh, so the cost uh, per unit has really gone down, and so now it's it's worth you know investing in these things. And number two is there are now companies like Kajit that are able to kind of take a very daunting uh, journey of, gosh, I got to talk to the device manufacturers. I got to make sure it's right. secure. I've got to get connectivity, you know, right. all these different things. Um, so we're able to kind of take those and put them in a box, right? And just say, here's your solution in a box. We're going to ship you the device or devices that you need. You're going to tag 
whatever it is, you're going to put it in place. Um, and we've taken care of the rest, right? Now yeah. you're going to have the applications, everything you need to manage it. Um, and, uh, and you know, whatever it is that you need to do, it's, it's uh, all kind of encompassed in one solution. So I think that's made it a lot more accessible. Uh, I, I, I could not agree more. Um, it's, it's interesting when you're talking about asset tracking to think about how far the industry has come. And that goes back to the point I was making about connectivity. And at the same time, the, from on the cost side, um, a lot of these use cases were too expensive to justify the assets that they were tracking to, right. to implement, right? So like if you had a very inexpensive asset and the tracker costs more than the asset, then it doesn't make sense. So um, as these costs are dropping, it's becoming more optimal for companies to build out an asset tracking solution that they have hundreds to thousands to millions of assets. Um, if they can bring the cost per device or however it's 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 costed out down to, to make to justify implementing it and the results and the return that they're going to get. So, so all of that is, is, is very well taken. So I completely agree. I'll throw one more funny one out there I mean, sure. because people laugh when they ask me what I do and I kind of tell them a little bit about the company and the types of use cases. Yep. We yep. have a, uh, we have a chicken farm. Um, uh, well, it's larger than a chicken farm, but chicken coop, um, uh, where we monitor, monitor the temperatures in each one of the, uh, in the chicken coops, right? So every little chicken needs to make sure that it's in optimal temperature in order to lay the most and be as most productive in terms of laying eggs and all that kind of stuff. And so we have entire you know, chicken farms that are uh, censored up um, to, to be able to make sure that they're, they're optimizing production. And it seems yep. like that's kind of crazy to use IOT for, but it is big business. I mean, it's a Oh, for sure. This business. For sure. You think about this such a tiny cost that's basically just sending a chirp back saying, hey, take care of me. I'm I'm like out of, uh, you know, you need to change the thermostat or even just do it machine to machine to keep it in the optimal temperature. Um, you think about that as a use case that wouldn't have been accessible five, 10 years ago and on a cost basis and made sense. But now it's easy and it just makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think what, again, tying it back to the cost piece, like you just said, once you can make it make sense from from an ROI perspective, um, mm -hmm. then it becomes much more clear on how this fits and what it can do for a business. So, so for sure, totally agree. Um, now, I wanted to ask another question. So, if we're talking about IoT devices, connectivity, and how they're really contributing to um, places where, let's say, people are not as well off or unable to get you know, the same goods, same services and stuff in other places. I'm curious as from your perspective in, in the, in, in the space, how IOT is really helping kind of close that digital divide that, you know, is, is sometimes present in certain areas. Yeah, that's, um, that's really important for us at Khajiit. You know, it's part of our kind of our mission statement when we say connections for good is for us to help those disadvantaged situations by providing, you know, broadband connectivity where they wouldn't otherwise have it. One example was uh, we, we set up almost a half a million students with remote learning um, during the whole COVID pandemic when everybody went uh, to, um, you know, work, uh, school from home. Um, in order to do that, you know, it was it was daunting for schools. How, how do we do that? How do we take all these kids that don't have broadband at home and give them the same advantage as those that do? And so in some cases, we were sending out smart spots um, if they may have had a computer, or in some cases, they didn't even have a computer. And so we were... Yep. You know, embedded LTE, um, you know, laptops or, or Chromebooks, sending those out to students. But for all of those school districts to be able to have equity, um, yep. you know, we provisioned a ton of devices, got them to the schools, to the school. Within a month, I think we pushed nearly half a million out um, wow. so that kids could continue to uh, to receive quality education. Another yeah. one is healthcare, And that one's huge. I mean, it's it is. Uh, it, the amount of money that the government spends, I, I want to say it's definitely in the top two or three from a GDP perspective of what mm. we spend on healthcare. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of billions of dollars is spent on it. And just from a government perspective, the funds that they flow into Medicare and Medicaid to take care of what ends up being in Medicaid's, um, in the case of Medicaid, people that just can't afford to have internet connectivity. And um, in the case of Medicare, a lot of people who are homebound because they're so sick with so many disease conditions. So you take these people that are the sickest and poorest and unable to get to their doctors and hospitals, et cetera. And what the studies show is that 
those that have acute care situations or are not able to get in the doctor cost significantly more um, to sure. the system um, because they're not getting the treatment that other more affluent people would be able to have access to. So right. by being able to do remote patient monitoring, telehealth, et cetera, you can take somebody who has some of these issues and send out an in-the-box solution um, to monitor them, to connect them to their healthcare providers, et cetera. And so they don't have to do anything, right? They don't need to worry mm -hmm. about, I got to configure this with my Wi-Fi connection. And, you know, they don't need to be experts. It comes in the box. They take it out of the box. There's a simple card with instructions. It's already ready to go in terms of connected to their doctors. You know, it could be a blood pressure cuff or a pulse ox right. monitor right. or, you know, smart scale or whatever it is. Say you're a diabetic, you need four or five devices to monitor you. It just comes in a box and you just plug it in and mm -hmm. there you go. You're connected. Yep. And, uh, you know, that bridging that gap to be able to get those sick patients and the patients that wouldn't have otherwise have access um, uh, to healthcare is really going to change the it's a game changer for for us being able to better control and have healthier outcomes. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I wanted to kind of as we're wrapping up here, I wanted to ask you a quick question about your from your perspective on the challenges in IoT. We talked a lot about kind of enablement or enablers within IoT as far as different connectivity, cost driving, uh, being driven down edge computing, things like that. But from a challenges side, where are you seeing the biggest challenges lie in IoT? And you can take this from, from any angle you wish, but just out of curiosity, what are you seeing as kind of the biggest challenges we need to kind of work to overcome? Yeah. So I think in general, some of the big challenges is uh, it's a complex uh, ecosystem, sure. right? Not all devices talk to uh, other devices, uh, applications, um, you know, how companies deploy them, the logistics, reverse logistics, um, you know, the how you get connected and maintain that connectivity. Maybe you're in a bad area for one carrier, but not another. There are just so many aspects to it. And so uh, companies or individuals have a, a hard time really kind of putting all that together because they're not experts in it. And so I think just the overwhelming fact that uh, there are so many different types of use cases, so many different types of uh, places for things to go wrong. Um, right, right. You know, unless a company is a high tech company that's used to dealing with this, it's a struggle for them. And so sure. that's one of the niches that I would say um, that Khajiit tries to overcome is we're going to take care of all that stuff for you. Right. Mm -hmm. We are going to take that really daunting ecosystem. We're going to boil it down to, you know, whatever your use cases are, we're going to give it to you all packaged up and we're going to support it. And, you know, you're not going to have to do anything except for sign a contract with us. Tell us how many you need, where you want them. Yeah. And yep. we'll send them out and support them and et cetera. I think one of the other challenges, uh, well, I'll say just a challenge for us as a company <clears throat> is, uh, focus, right? There is yeah, so sure. much happening every day, changing like new devices, new protocols, uh, new security threats, you know, so many yeah. different things that are happening. So to kind of keep up with all of that, you know, Khajiit, probably one of my biggest challenges is for me to work with our, our GMs and our, our product folks to say, um, you know, what are those best use cases where we can make the biggest impact? And then let's focus on certain industries and certain use cases and then build from there. If we try to boil the ocean, we're going to be mediocre at everything. So instead, yep. it's what's that five, ten, you know, things that we can work on to establish and then the next two and the next two, et cetera. So for me, yep. it's about maintaining focus because we want to be at ex excellent at whatever uh, industry and whatever use case we go after. How How is the... Um or how have you all seen the supply chain kind of, you know, pan, I don't want to say, you know, issues that we're seeing really influence IoT? Like, how are you, how has it yeah. kind of been handled on your end and how just high level, how are you seeing it kind of influence things uh, as, you know, more of a challenge for, for IoT since there are a lot of moving pieces and components that need to be implemented to be successful? Yeah, um, <clears throat> especially during the early stages of COVID, um, we would call suppliers and we would say, what devices do you have? Okay, we'll take them all, right? Um, <laughs> how many Chromebooks you got? Okay, we we were calling literally everybody from CDW to direct, every single one, you know, we're getting sold out, we're getting sold out. So for us, it was buy every device that you can and we'll provision it later, right? And so we went into a mad scramble um, and then things calmed down for a little bit. Um, 
and uh, and then in the last what six months or so, it's become ridiculous again as as uh, you know shipping and all the other things, the manufacturing in China, et cetera, have all slowed down. We're right back to the same place again. So now trying to get devices is a mad scramble. Um, and unfortunately, what happens is that you get used to, hey, I've built a solution around these certain types of devices and certifications, et cetera, and then the market doesn't have those devices, and right. you have to then move to the next tier of device and get those certified quickly and make sure that they work properly. And sure. so you're not moving down two or three tiers and using lots of different vendors in order to meet the supply, and it becomes more complex. Yep. No, that totally makes sense. I'm curious to see how this... Um kind of just all works itself out over the over the coming months. And and that kind of leads into a good kind of maybe way to finish this off is as we are still early in the year, what from what are you all seeing as kind of the biggest things you're excited for maybe in 2022 or um, uh, or expecting to happen in the industry kind of going forward? Yeah, I'd say there's probably two things that <clears throat> that are going to play big for us. Um, maybe three. Um, one is um, video okay. as more and more, <clears throat> excuse me, as more and more um, bandwidth like 5G is, is available in uh, mobile broadband, many more uh, video applications um, are, are going to be, be important in the IoT space that weren't mm -hmm. possible before on an LTE device. Sure. Um, and that kind of plays into my second part, which is remote patient monitoring. Uh, okay. One of the companies we're working with right now that we're supplying for is um, it has some really cool things like they can set up uh, video monitoring. You can't afford a home health care professional. So let's say you're not ready right. to go through an assisted living, right. but right. you can't afford to have somebody in your house all the time to be right. able to set up, um, you know, video monitoring that, you know, takes certain, uh, you know, either motion detected or at certain times of the day kind of check ins and stuff like that. Um, sensors that maybe you put in your shoes or whatever. So sure, you can kind of keep sure, track sure. of what's happening with these people um, that can't afford one, but they're not sick enough to, to go to the other uh, setting. And so um, I think that's going to be really uh, exciting mm -hmm. is how we can, uh, you know, monitor patients and or just the population in general. I, I love in their solution, either a doctor can check in or a family member right, can right. kind of check in and say, hey, you know, they haven't gotten out of bed today or whatever. Yep. Um, and check in on them. So I think that's one really cool one. And then also we're starting to see a lot more um, private networks. Oh, with, yeah, that's true. People, Very true. People buy, yeah. you know, uh, with people taking advantage of the CBRS spectrum uh, that's mm -hmm. out there now. Many organizations, governments, et cetera, are trying to say, hey, I want a smart city or a smart campus or a smart whatever. And right. I don't necessarily need to go to all the carriers to do that for me because I can set up antennas and build my own private connection on. Uh, uh, you know, covered three miles or five miles or whatever and right, stay within right. my Wi-Fi network and then roll out into my private LTE network. So I think there's a lot of uh, room to run there for private networks as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I uh, had a, a guest the other day talking about a similar topic uh, around private LTE and kind of the, the role it plays with, with campuses, hospitals, um, uh, stadiums, things like that. Yeah. So, so de definitely very relevant stuff. Um, so for our audience out there who wants to learn more about Kajit, kind of what you have going on, how to stay in touch, uh, ask any follow-up questions, what's the best way to do that? Uh, well, they can go to our website uh, at kajit.com, uh, learn all about our products and services there. Um, also uh, on Twitter, uh, you okay. can, uh, well, I think you can post uh, some of that information yep. uh, and, and uh, of course, you can always uh, reach out uh, to me on LinkedIn if you want to connect uh, and be happy to either talk directly or send you to the right person in our company. Fantastic. Well, Greg, this has been a great conversation. Thanks so much again for taking the time and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for having me, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.